Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever it is that this message reaches you from. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and I welcome you all once again for our evening summary today. Welcome, welcome. I welcome you all in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Welcome. So today we were blessed once again this afternoon. God used the man of God, Pastor Dudu, to share the gospel with us. And we were truly, truly blessed. And that's what we're going to be sharing this evening based on what was taught this afternoon, earlier this afternoon. We're going to be sharing it, summarizing it um, in English so that we can all have a share on that um, once again I welcome you all before we get into the summary of tonight as usual we're just going to recommend this moment in God's hand in prayer so please join me in prayer from wherever you are and let us just together recommend this moment in God's hand Father, we praise you, we uplift your name, we give you thanks. Thank you for you are great. Thank you for having been with us throughout the week. Thank you for this day, you who knew of it before we did. Dear Lord, we recommend this moment in your hand. Father God, we welcome your presence amongst us this evening. Dear Lord, I pray that in this summary tonight, dear Lord, it won't be me speaking. It won't be me necessarily directing it, dear Lord. It won't be me, your children are here to focus focus on or to hear from but it's you dear Lord speaking through me may you use me as a simple instrument father may all that be said this evening be for your honor and glory may we focus our mind our attention on you and you alone father God I pray that you would truly bless us all this evening father God I pray that your presence father will begin with us and end with us throughout this summary we welcome your presence we uplift your name above all in Jesus Jesus Christ mighty name we pray amen amen so today uh, the men of God shared with us on the theme of Jesus Christ a unique dose Jesus Christ a unique dose and um, this theme was grasped from the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28 uh, so I'm just going to read Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28 for us quickly so that we get into understanding what is actually meant behind this theme of Jesus Christ the unique dose so Jesus Christ a unique dose so Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28 I read for us quickly um, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sin of many and he will appear a second time not to bear sin but to bring salvation. That sacrifice was enough for him now to come back for our salvation. He will not be coming back to be sacrificed again, no. The scripture does not say Christ will return and be sacrificed again, or Christ will appear in a way or any kind of symbol to symbolize another sacrifice, no. Christ was sacrificed once and that was enough. So this is where we got our theme from, that once, that unique sacrifice. He is that unique dose, he is that unique message medicine, one that heals all. It doesn't need to be prescribed to us twice. It doesn't need to be prescribed to us three times. The Jesus Christ coming, God did not need to send Christ three, four, five times. No, just the once. That unique prescription for that unique dose that heals all, that treats all. Christ has had come and was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many and that was in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28 and the men of God men of God also shared with us in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11 to 12 also in Hebrews chapter 9 verse uh, 24 from verse 24 onwards to kind of um, explain to us more and it's just highlighting that once that one sacrifice in the book of Hebrew and um, the man of God reminded us that the high priest 
in Hebrew, we see the high priest, they had to, in the old covenant, they had to repeat the sacrifices. So the sacrifices of the animals had to be repeated in order for sin to continuously be forgiven. So it had to be repeated. But with Christ, it was that one sacrifice, that unique sacrifice that was done, which um, today we sit and wait for our salvation. And um, the, so to understand the theme a bit more, the man of God brought us to understand what is meant by a dose. So when we are saying um, the theme to be um, Jesus Christ, a unique dose, the man of God brought us to try to understand more what is meant by a dose. So he was a, um, it was defined to us that a, a dose is a quantity of a medicine or a drug taken or recommended to be taken at a particular time so uh, the dose a dose is something that uh, your GP your doctor may give to you in your medication they give you how many dose whether it's 250 gram whatever gram it is that you need to take and at what time how many times a day so those are your doses and um, they they are to be respected in hope of a successful recovery. So when we are using this personification of Jesus Christ being that dose, we are basically acknowledging that there is an illness because, or there was an illness, because in order for a GP or your doctor to prescribe you with a medication and be telling you which doses to take, it's because there is something that needs healing. There is something that needs saving from there is an illness or some sort of infection or whatever that you've come across and it's needing that medication in order to resolve it in order to give you that um that uh, uh whether it is to bring you back to good health. So when we are using this personification, we, when we are referring Jesus Christ as that unique dose, we are recognizing that there was or there is an illness that we are needing Jesus Christ for as our dose to heal us from that. So to understand the illness more uh, in more depth and much clearer, the man of God brought us to the book of Genesis where it all began. So how did this illness begin that we need Jesus Christ as our medication? Well, the man of God brought us to Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 to 17 where it shares with us, And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden but you must not eat from the tree of um, of the knowledge of good and evil for when you eat from it you will certainly die so in my bible it says you will certainly die god here does not say you might die or you may die or you may be poisoned or you may fall sick or you may you know have a broken leg or your heart may experience heart failure or whatever no it's very clear the scriptures makes it very clear eat from that fruit you will die you will certainly die. There's no two ways around it. There's no corners around it to justify the words and maybe play or tweak it about. No, it's you will certainly die. You eat that fruit, you will die. You will die. There's no two way around it. And um, so here we get to realize, linking back to that theme, we get to realize that men sinned and disobedience brought death. So Adam, who we know, ate of that fruit and that disobedience brought death. So from death, the death we are speaking of here isn't necessarily physical death, it is that, um, that separation. So man separating with God, that separation, that disobedience brought death. It brought death. So it's not a physical death, but a spiritual death, that separation from man and God. So what comes after that separation? Um, so the men of God shared with us, as it says in Genesis 3 verse 9, where it says, But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, 
I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. So we're seeing here, we're growing to understand where this separation leads to. So the same voice that Adam used to hear, the same voice of God, because Adam was in that communication with God before committing this sin. He used to hear God's voice, this voice that used to bring comfort, this voice of God that used to give Adam instruction, this voice of God that used to work with Adam. But today, now in Genesis chapter 3 verse 9, we learn that now Adam became afraid. He heard the voice and became afraid. That voice he is now scared of. That voice he is now ashamed of. So we got to, we get here to realizing that the, the fear is signifies, uh, it's showing that sin can lead, it can lead to guilt. It can lead to shame. Um, and all of this is basically, it's, op uh, it's opening doors to lead you to that self-exclusion, to lead you away from the presence of God. Adam hid. Adam heard the voice. It's not the case Adam he heard the voice and just kind of stayed there and tried to figure out where it was coming from or felt lost or whatever. No, he heard the voice. He recognized the voice. He knows what he did, the sin he committed. And often in our life, just like Adam, we commit our sin. And it's the case where sin, what sin does to us, it leads us to that separation with God. It leads us to that death. It leads us to that shame. That shame wears over us. That guilt wears over us. That um, that um, self-exclusion wears over us. So some may try and figure out and say, well, what fruit is it that Adam ate? Because clearly in that fruit, they're saying, you eat this fruit, you will die. It's not the fruit. It's not necessarily the fruit. You could sit down today, tomorrow, and 10 years later trying to figure out, was it an apple? Because I need to refrain myself from eating apples. Was it strawberry? Because I need to refrain myself from eating strawberry. Was it grape? Because I need to stop eating grape. Because that fruit is leading to sin. No, the fruit is representing sin. The fruit that Adam ate is representing sin. Here we are showing that Adam sinned. What he did was committed a sin and this is what sin, according to the scriptures, according to what we've just read, sin, if you eat of that fruit, you will certainly die. If you commit that sin, you will certainly die and that death is representing the separation from God. It's a spiritual death. You are separating from God. You are deviating from the presence of God. You are getting into that self-exclusion from the presence of God. So to avoid sin, it's there to, today's gospel is there to remind us to avoid sin. Not only to avoid sin, also it's important that if we do commit a sin, to make sure that we repent and remain in the presence of our Father. Um, so going on from that, um, uh, the men of God reminded us that sin has a dramatic consequence. Sin has a dramatic consequence. Adam, we see, he became afraid. He became ashamed, feeling unworthy. Adam, who had power over evil, but due to sin, he felt inferior. He felt, uh, he felt he felt like he was no longer worthy. He felt defeated. Uh, many of us, I know me, myself sometimes, or you, or wherever it is that you are also, when it is that you commit sin, sometimes when you're entering into prayer and you may be doing a prayer of authority, that I take authority over this, I, I rebuke this spirit, I rebuke that and that. And sometimes when you're praying within you, that shame of the sin you may have committed, that guilt then comes over you it's almost like in your head you're hearing someone go you you really think you have power to be chasing away anybody 
I don't think so. So you kind of hear or feel you can hear these voices in your head, which brings you to that shame. So sometimes you feel like, I want to skip this prayer of authority. Let me just pray, ask for forgiveness. Let me just pray and, um, you know, thanking God because I don't want to exercise that um, category of prayer as such. This is what sin tends to do to us. This is what this sin tends to bring us to. The, away from the presence of God. Away from the presence of God. And um, m many today, many today allows the, the guilt to rule over their life. Allows the guilt to rule over their life. Because the more you are feeding into this guilt, the more you are feeding into this shame, you're not allowing yourself to fully repent. You're not allowing yourself to bring yourself back to the presence of God. You're only allowing yourself to feed more and more into that self exclusion there are some who may it may have been the case i'm not encouraging you in saying all this i'm not encouraging you please i'm not encouraging you to commit sin i'm not saying that sin is right i'm not encouraging you in the wrong you may have done or the wrong you are doing but what i am trying to say to you is that when we do commit sin please brother or sister wherever it is you find yourself to do not run away from the presence of God. Do not run away from the presence of God. There are some who may have committed, uh, uh, may have done abortion. There are some who may have committed murder. There are some who could have, they, they may have criminal, um, criminal records today. It doesn't mean that what it is that you've done, it then warrants you to run from the presence of God. It doesn't mean that what it is that you've done, it warrants you to hide from the presence of God. No, you have done wrong. Repentance, repentance. This is the good news that the man of God brought for us today. That Jesus Christ is that unique dose he is that unique dose that unique medication that heals us from the sin we have committed that allows us to be refreshed or that allows us to be born again to become new with a new identity from the criminal record you had to have that new identity from the abortion person the the, the person you've killed or from the abortion that you did that identity that you had there to now have a new identity through Christ in God, through Jesus Christ, that unique dose. God, Jesus Christ, allows, uh, enables that to happen for us. And um, the man of God helped us to see that sin brought condemnation. Sin brought condemnation. So Jesus Christ, that unique dose. Why do we need that unique dose? Why do we need that unique dose? Well, we are in need of that unique dose because sin brought condemnation. Where it says, you will certainly die, Adam. You will certainly die. This is our result from sin. This was what our result for, from sin was destined to be. So we needed that dose. We needed that immunization. We needed that treatment. We needed that vaccination. We need that dose, which is Jesus Christ, to save us from that death to save us from that death. Those of you who are wondering, well, why did Jesus die physically? Well, it was because he took our condemnation. He took that condemnation. He died in our place. So where you and I were meant to die, he died in our place. So that that no longer, uh, that, so that that no longer uh, be our outcome. So that, that death, that death, that separation from God no longer be our case. So men sinned, but God still had mercy on man and still needed man in order to accomplish his promise or his work on earth. But in the justice of God, he could not undermine his loyalty. He could not undermine what it is that he has said. He could not undermine his word. So as he said, when you eat that fruit, you will die. He cannot now just change it. Okay, forget it. You won't die. Go eat the fruit. No, no. 
His words remain. His words remain. But what he did, because he had mercy on man, he shared a direction in order to restore that relationship and come back into his presence even after committing sin. And that was through sacrifice. And this act of sacrifice, we've seen it even from the old covenant. From the old covenant, we've seen the act of sacrifice. The act of sacrifice was the bridge to bringing you to the presence of God, to bringing man to once again be worthy in the presence of God, because that sin created that separation. So that sacrifice allows for there to be that bridge, that bridge bridge that allows man to cross over and come back to the presence of God. And um, in Hebrews, uh, what it says about uh, uh, about the old covenant, uh, so the men of God brought us to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 3, where it says, but those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sin. So those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sin. So the sacrifice that was being done during the old covenant was not enough. It was not enough. It needed to be repeated. It wasn't you, uh, you sacrificed the animal once and that's it. Your sins are forgiven. That's it going forward. No, that sacrifice was not enough. It tells us here, it was an annual reminder. It was repetitive. It was, uh, sorry, it was repetitive. It was repeated every year. So the dose we have in Christ is unique. But the dose that they had then, it was, it needed to be repeated. It's like being prescribed medication. Let's say you have a long-term illness and you're prescribed a medication and you're just taking it because you don't know when it will ever end. So every now and then, whether it is every two days, every three days, you take it so that it just helps you cover for that week or that month. And then it may change to a different dose or a different kind next week or next month. So you just continuously take those medication because it's a long term illness. A doctor cannot tell you it will heal after this or after that. You just continue in hope that one day it will terminate. But with Christ, we have that unique dose, as if to say, this is the medication that will terminate the illness completely, erase it from your history, erase it completely. This is the one dose. This is the one medication that we have through Jesus Christ. And um, um, uh, the man of God also reminded us that the children of Israel, the children of Israel's uh, sacrifice, so because that falls under the old covenant, that story, the children of Israel's uh, uh, sacrifice did not cover all sins. So this is another part. This is another thing. So not only were this, uh, the, the sacrifice needed to be done uh, repetitively, but it also did not necessarily cover all sins or guarantee uh, that all sins will be forgiven. Uh, there were certain sins that once committed, there are no sacrifice. There are no sacrifice for it. And... Uh, to understand this a bit more clearer, the man of God brought us to the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 23 to 27, where it shows the process to be taken in sacrifice uh, for the unintentional sin. So it's bringing us to realize that during the old covenant, unintentional sin were approached in a certain way and intentional sin were approached in a certain way so um reminding us that that not all sin not all sins are guaranteed to be forgiven and uh, to understand it more and more deeper um, the man of God also had us look at Numbers chapter 15 verse 28 to 30 where I'll read for us quickly I read in Jesus Christ's mighty name um the priest is to make at, uh, atonement before the Lord for the one who erred by sinning unintentionally and when uh, atonement has been made, that person will be forgiven. One and the same law applies to everyone who sins unintentionally, whether a native-born Israelite 
for or a foreigner resident amongst you. But anyone who sins dif uh, differently, w uh, whether native born or uh, foreigner, blasph uh, blasphemies the Lord and must be cut off from the people of Israel because they have despised the Lord's word and broken his command, they must surely be cut off. Their guilt remains on them. My goodness. Their guilt remains on them. So imagine from the sin of Adam in that old covenant, God still having mercy on man and showing them that even though this happens, even though that death takes place, that separation for me takes place, I'm going to give you these doughs, which allows you to create the bridge. So by doing these sacrifice, it allows you to create that bridge from you, man, to reach me, God. But, but. Here is the thing, if your sin was unintentional, here are the procedures to take in order to cross over that bridge, bridge and reach my presence and be forgiven. But if your sin was intentional, there is no sacrifice that you could do to cross that bridge. So there is no way to cross that bridge. And as it says here, it, that guilt remains with you. That guilt remains with you. So there's no way around it. So Jesus Christ is the only sacrifice that delivers us from guilt and shame of all sin. Of all sin. So the new covenant, us through Jesus Christ living in this new covenant through Christ, we get to explore and rejoice and experience that through Christ, through Christ alone, that Christ alone was the only ultimate sacrifice that was accepted, that was accepted by the Father, covering all sin, removing shame and guilt from all sin. What a glorious, glorious, glorious reminder it is. And examples of intentional uh, sin. The men of God shared with us some, for example, killing someone, committing an abortion, fornication, adultery, stealing or lying. All of these are sins that could be intentional. But I understand that there may be some cases where it may be forced upon you. It's not something that you wanted to do, but ended up being a part of. So intentional sin is Things that we do, where it is that you are doing it intentionally. In the old covenant, there was no way around being forgiven for that. But through the mercy of God, can you imagine you've done your friend wrong? Or it is you've done your spouse, your husband, your wife wrong. And you've asked for that forgiveness. And that partner of yours or that friend of yours monthly reminds you that you've done wrong. You know you've done wrong. Remember what it is that you've done. You've done wrong. And you have to repeat on forgiving. I mean asking for forgiveness over and over and over again. Every month. Every month you are reminded of this. Or every year you are reminded of this. It stops someone from being able to move on. It stops that person that committed that wrong from being able to move on because every time you're about to take a step forward to moving on, you're reminded of that guilt. You're once again clothed with that guilt, that shame that's refraining you from successfully moving on. And that's kind of similar to what it was in the old covenant. But now through Christ, God wants us to be able to move on from our sin, to move on from that fear, that shame, and remain in his presence. His mercy, through his mercy upon us, he's allowed this. He's allowed this for us through his love, through his love. It's not because our God is weak. Uh, he would allow anything. No, it's mercy and grace. His favour upon us, which has allowed this. He's allowed for Christ to come and be that unique dose of medication, of immunization for us. To be able to resist all this guilt. To be able to resist 
all this shame through repentance in him, we're able, we're able to rise above this and remain in his presence. Um, and the man of God brought us to um, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, uh, where it says, And by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. So us who are living in grace, in the time of grace right now, us who are living in this new covenant, we are living at that time of grace. We are living at a time where it's saying here in Hebrews 10 verse 10 that, and by that will we have been made holy holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all once and for all not so not twice not three times or four times once and for all we are holy in his presence and in John uh, chapter 1 verse 12 where it says but as many as received him uh, um, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So to us, born again in Christ, he has given us that power to become children of God. There's us with a new identity. Through Christ we have that new identity. Through Christ we have that new DNA. Through Christ we are born again. In Him we are born again. Through Christ we have that vaccination that fights all spiritual disease. Through Christ we have that medication that fights all that fights against us. Through Christ our one and unique dose through Christ and um, the men of God reminds us Jesus Christ truly truly is that one and unique dose Christ the medication that healed our fresh uh, uh, sorry our flesh and soul from the sin of Adam Jesus Christ is the the only um, the only dose that can save us from all that is happening and and the men of God reminded us that Christ can only be an overdose if we choose to walk our life um, in the example of let's say Judas where we start seeing that what he is what, what Christ has done is not enough we need to do more we need to add more we need to add on to that that's when it becomes an overdose. And just like Judas ended up taking his own life. He is enough. He is enough. We don't need a second prescription. We don't need a third prescription. We don't need to go looking around to our neighbours, our friends, for another way through getting to God. Christ is the one and only unique dose the only one that we need and a dose that changes a sinner into a saint a dose that can change a gang leader to become a servant of God and preach the gospel a those that can change lives are those that can transform, transform your inside, transform you through, uh, throughout, transform your life, transform your thinking style, transform your approach, transform your reasoning, transform your wisdom, transform your intelligence, transform your marriage, transform your finance, transform all that is of you. He can transform that one dose, that unique dose, that unique dose, that unique vaccination. Can you imagine they come to you and they say, this unique medication, this one pill can heal cancer, any form of cancer, any form of cancer. This one pill can heal HIV. Just take it and that's it. No more history of HIV. This one pill can heal 
mental illness. This one pill can heal it all. This one dose can heal it all. Christ is that unique dose that can heal it all. Please, I remind us that when we say Christ is that unique dose that can heal it all. We are speaking spiritually. I'm not saying that stop taking your medication. If you are on medication from your GP, from your doctors, I'm not saying that stop, you know, going to work because Christ is that covering of finance. No, what I'm trying to say here is spiritually, in our spiritual life, when we are speaking of that death, that separation from God, Christ is that one dose that can bring us to the presence of God. And in the presence of God, there lays all that riches. There lays all that he has planned for us to rejoice in our life. And through him, he guides us in order to receive our blessing whilst on earth. It's not the case we sit down and money falls down on us. It's not the case we just sit down and we are blessed with all, all that he has stored for us. No, he guides us on how to get it, how to grasp it and how to rejoice in it whilst on earth. So um, the man of God brought us to the importance of our understanding our identity. The importance of understanding our identity. Because once we understand and truly our identity whilst on earth we will easily understand that Jesus Christ is that one and unique dose is that one and unique dose once we understand our identity and the man of God shared with us that there are other believers other believers that um, they go through certain lengths to exercise what it is that they believe in. Although we may not necessarily agree with them, there are those who, because of their belief of the, uh, they believe in the reward that they will receive after they die, some of them sacrifice even themselves. They will dress themselves in bombs and sit next to people and allow it that that bomb goes off. Not only kill the people around them, but even them themselves. Because they believe in what it is that they are to experience after. Not that we are encouraging this, but just trying to get us to see the lengths and the measures that some may take. But you and I today... Some of us, many of us, were living our life like Peter. How Peter rejected Jesus Christ three times after they asked him, do you know him? And he rejected, he denied of knowing him three times. You and I, some of us, we even, when it is that we are applying for jobs, you quickly log into your Facebook or your social media. Let me remove anything that shows I'm a Christian because I don't want it to affect my application for the job. They may see it. They may see that I'm a Christian and may uh, refuse to take me onto the job. Let me uh, not tell these certain group of new friends that I'm a Christian. Let me not so much express my faith to them because I don't want them to see me in a certain way. I don't want them to judge me. And some of us, it may be that you may be joining a certain uh, group of, I, I don't know, work or meeting or whatever, and you don't necessarily want to share your faith. You don't want to recognize Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior before them because you feel that you don't want them looking at you a certain way you don't want them judging you in a certain way because you're, you're you're feeling that it may deprive you of certain advantage from them this is us these examples are us behaving like peter just like peter we are also denying jesus christ we are also denying the relationship we have with jesus christ just like peter i'm sure most of us when we read that part we may look at it as oh shame on you peter how may how could you how could you deny jesus christ like this shame on you not realizing that you and i may be doing it daily you and i peter, Peter did it three times, but so far in our lives, we may have done it 50 times already. 
50 times already and still pending because life is still continuing. We may do it again tomorrow or next week. It's only grace. It's only God's grace. It's only God's grace that you and I are living today. It's only God's grace that you and I are in the health that we are in today. It's only God's grace that these good news keeps coming our way so that we can repent, so that we can change our way, so that we can grow knowledge, so that we can understand in depth that Jesus Christ is that unique dose for us. We don't need to try and overdose ourselves. We don't need to try and take matters into our own hands. We don't need to allow guilt and shame to drive us away from the presence of our Lord and Saviour, from the presence of our Maker, from the presence of our God. We need to prioritise in remaining in the presence of God. We need to, need to remind ourselves of this for it's very, very important. And still looking at understanding our new identity through Christ. Uh, to, uh, the man of God um, brought us to, um, to see that understanding our identity through Christ also help us, helps us to know that we have that dose that allows the enemy to fight against us but never conquer us. Never conquer us. We have that dose, we have that immunization, that disease is coming your way, but you're already immune. You have that vaccination in you. You have that DNA in you. You have that inheritance in you. You're born again in Christ. It's fighting you. The disease is fighting you. It's fighting the world, but it's not able to conquer you because you're immune. You're immune. You have that dose. You have that treatment. It cannot conquer you through Christ. And the men of God brought us to look at the story of Hannah and Penina. And um, through that story, as many of us know, Hannah, who could not bear children for such a long time, to grow to understand that it, it was only to the point where Hannah came in the presence of God realizing that whatever it is that's going on, whether it is guilt, whether it is stress, whether it is pain, whether it is, um, uh, I don't know, whatever issue it is that's bringing you low, that's bringing you down as we looked at last week, sadness, all of this that's trying to deviate you from the presence of God. Anna, who could not bear children, who was struggling for such a long time, she could have gone to look for her healing or help on that in different ways from different places but recognizing who your maker is recognizing who your master is recognizing who is there to guide lead and protect you going back into his presence whatever it is i'm going through whatever pain shame it is that i'm going through but recognizing that in your presence god is the only place I will find solution. In your presence, God, is the only place that I will get my salvation. In your presence, through Christ, our one and unique dose. Our one and unique dose. And the men of God stress that also it's important to also remind us to even our children to our children, teaching our children of this. Because our children today, going into school, many of them are being bullied. Many of them are being bullied. An example we can give is um, a rich child, for example. A rich child who went into a new school and said, I don't want that new school to necessarily know I'm poor. I mean, sorry, to necessarily know I'm rich. So I'm gonna go into that school just like a regular kid and pretend I'm just like them. I'm not rich, I'm just quite poor, also like them. So when that child goes into that school and that child gets bullied, as in, oh, you're poor, you're very, very, very poor. How could, that, how could you allow that bullying to actually affect you? Because they're accusing you of something you know you are not. You're not poor, you know you're rich. You know that you can at any time click your finger and leave that school. You can at any time walk back home and re rejoice in your wealth, in your richness. 
You know that there are many friends outside that school wanting to be your friends because they know you are rich. You know how popular you can possibly be with what it is that you have. So how could you allow one kid in this new school to fully bully you by calling you poor when you know inside you that you are not poor, when you know inside you that you are rich? You will not allow this just like us children of God, just like us children of God. I cannot be intimidated. I cannot be bullied because I know of my identity in Christ. Because I know who I am in Christ. I know the vaccination I have. I know the immunization I have. I know the dose I have which has saved me from all sin. How rich am I? I know how rich I am. I am. I know that God has destined me for great things. You may laugh at me today. I'm dressed poor. You may laugh at me today that I'm not at a grade or the standard that you may be at. But I know I'm destined for great things things because I know that is my identity. I know that is my share. I cannot dwell in what it is that's causing me pain. And we could look at it just like Hannah, you know God has destined you for great things. How can you continue to cry? I could imagine after coming to the presence of God, Hannah may have gone back home. Although she's not yet pregnant, I could imagine when Penina is there showing off her kids, she perhaps, she perhaps sat there and said, I rejoice with you for what you have because I also know my own will come in due time. I know the one I serve will also bless me. And today we were truly, truly blessed. We blessed. God for sharing uh, through the man of God for using his servant the way he did this afternoon to bless us in the way we were blessed reminding us the theme of today Jesus Christ a unique dose Jesus Christ a unique dose his sacrifice is the only sacrifice that was accepted by the father to erase all sin to erase all sin or sin, whether it was intentional or unintentional, to erase all sin. So it's not the case that we have two covenant. It's not the case that, oh, sometimes we, we also live in the old covenant and sometimes we also live in the new covenant. No, the new covenant came to overtake the old covenant. So through the new covenant, that's what we are living, through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, through the work that Jesus Christ did for you and I. It's enough, beloved, it's enough, it's enough. Please, please, please. I know there are some that they're serving God, but they're on the side, they're, they're trying to do some sort of black magic, they're, they're trying to practice some sort of rituals because they feel that it is not enough. Certain matters they need to take into their own hands. Please, I plead of you, no. I plead of you, no. Let that not be our case. The dose we have that God prescribed for us, which is Jesus Christ, is enough. Is enough. Let's not overdose ourselves. Please, let's not overdose ourselves. We bless God for his words. We bless God for this evening. We bless God for what the man of God shared with us this afternoon. As we close, let's just pray and thank God for this moment in his presence. Dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for this moment that you've allowed us to be in your presence, Father. We thank you for reminding us today that Jesus Christ is the unique dose for us. We thank you, dear Lord, for this wonderful reminder. Father, I pray that, dear Lord, let it not be the case that we've just heard these words and that's it, but let it be the case that it remains in our hearts. Let it be the case that we remind ourselves of this daily. Let us let this be the case that we practice this dear lord daily father god 
for your honor and glory. We pray that you will continue to reign in our life. Lead us, dear Lord, and direct us according to your will. I thank you, Father, for having been present, dear Lord, throughout this evening summary. And I pray that you'll continue to watch over me and my brothers and sisters tuning in at this moment from wherever they are, dear Lord. I pray that you'll continue to watch over us and bless us, dear Lord, and protect us, dear Lord, until we meet next time to once again share your word, share the gospel, share the good news. We thank you in Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in and this evening. Once again, it was your sister Eunice joining your screens today from the Church of Kingdom of God Assembly. I thank you all for tuning in this evening. May God bless and continue to protect you all and your families. And until next time, please do take care of yourself and bye-bye. <laughs>